old school bodybuilding clothing company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Welcome back to Live with I am Dave Palumbo and I'm joined today by a good friend back by popular demand. Now he actually has a good movie out uh, that I want you guys to go check out. Uh, Guy Grundy, uh, welcome back to the show, number one. Number two, is that a wig or is that really your hair? It's really my hair. This is not a Mike O'Hearn impression, mate. This is all Grundy. (laughs) (laughs) How the heck did you grow so much hair? What's the Uh, secret? Just shave it for 10 years and I guess it wants to explode out of your head. So you always shaved your head just for the sake of it? It wasn't like a, it wasn't like I'm losing my hair, I better shave my head thing? No, no, my, my dad got real sick in 2010. So I went to Australia to see him and I kind of changed as a person. And that's when I started hanging with the Soul Collectors and Maverick as we talked it earlier. So the, the shaved head went well with the lifestyle. Yeah. And then it's like God rewarded me for shaving my head because now all of a sudden I'm booking roles as a, a meathead and, and people are going, <laughs> you're going to get typecast. And I'm like, as long as they book me, I don't care. As long as I'm not a little fairy boy, we're good. You know, I don't know why, but to, for some reason you look Irish to me with that, with the hair. I don't know. what, what the It's the beard and the uh, hair. You look like an Irishman. The, the funniest one I've heard, I oh, like that. I like Irish yeah. people. I love them, actually is my uh, cameraman on set for Maverick and Grundy goes, you look like a little Dutch boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> the truth of the matter is that, I, you know, with, with the shaved head, you definitely look like a tough badass. You know, this, I guess that was good for the roles you were going for. But now maybe yeah. the, the hair, did you grow the hair out for a reason, for a role, or just for to be different? Well, with the, uh, the, the situation with the COVID, I um, just started growing it back. And then I booked roles with it. So it's it just, it just was the progression. I just went as far as I could, which is to here. Yeah. And I was always going to shave it. If, if, I, if I got a good role, that's good money. And, uh, and, and the role's good, I would shave it again. But I've, I've now got the option of having a million different looks. So, right. um, and I've, I've had the head shaved for so long. And I did a different role in a really cool movie as like a, a warlord kind of character with wearing a suit and everything so it's fun that's the fun thing about acting you get to um you know you do whatever you can get originally and then as you get a little better or make your own movies you can start doing the roles that you want to do sure are you actually are you starting to make money like where you could actually support yourself from from acting now yeah yeah i i could i could say that i'm a a, a working uh what are they called yes i'm totally self-sufficient with the acting but awesome. i still have my clients i still um i will still work like 60 hours a week and shoot my movie uh maverick and grundy on sunday i've just i've been broke in and had a hard life and i love money and i don't mind working so <laughs> i'm at a point where i don't have to work a funny story for you is i'm doing a bodyguarding gig in beverly hills my clients a uh, bit of a party he goes grundy can you give me another four hours to like six in the morning and i'm like of course it's overtime and yeah i'm sitting there doing nothing really yeah and my cameraman who lives in hesperia which is two hours away and we shot maverick and grundy on sunday rings me at like 10 o'clock at night and goes i mean rose me yeah. and i'm like you've got no money have you and he's like no so basically he had to sit there and wait so after i finished work at six in the morning i drove to rose me he's like such a free-spirited kid i'm knocking on his window he wakes up oh Oh, good day, Grundy. How are you doing? I'm just going, this kid's got no care in the world. If I'm stranded on the street, and I have been, I'm yeah. sitting there frantic. I'm, I, so that, that's my life. And then I came back, got a few hours sleep and did this. So um, I like being busy, Dave. If I sit around doing nothing, yeah, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. It's just not me. How old are you now? Are you my age? 50. Oh, yeah, 50 years old. old. How old are you? I'm 53. You're a little younger than me, but not much. So, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're old, Dave. We're it's old, great. Dave. When, look, it's great when you can, even as you get older, you can kind of keep evolving. You know, you, you were into bodybuilding at first. You're fighting. 
acting and acting really can go forever because the roles always change so you might have to play a slightly older character but you always can you know morph yourself into whatever you know they're looking for how did you land this gig as a, on the American Fighter movie which is kind of a sequel like you said to write an American wrestler right yeah yeah American wrestler came out and won a lot of awards and they actually held this release of this movie back because it was still getting awards. It was doing so well. Mm. Um, how did I get it? Um, I'm good friends with the director, Sean Piccinino. Uh, the first role I ever got um, was The Deadliest Warrior on Spike TV where I played the Gladiator, and I got that through a Craigslist ad. Sean really liked me. They knew I had a violent background, so they weren't too keen on getting me. Five auditions later of just sword work and Sean just having my back, I picked me up for that. And then on that set, it's funny now that we talk about it because you, you, it's like your bodybuilding career, you appreciate it when you finish. So I'm on set for The Deadliest Warrior, just like a kid in a candy store with my shirt off my head, and my head was shaved, <laughs> getting taught to be a gladiator. Like I'm, I'm getting paid to do soon. I'm only getting like $75 a day, by the way. Like, I, I made like... $300 for the whole deadliest like, warrior. It's like slave labor, but you're loving it anyway. You don't care. But I didn't care. It was my opportunity. Yeah. And so on that set, I booked the role of Zaz, who's a Batman character in City of Scars with Aaron Shonky, who would go on to become a huge director. And he just directed another movie that I'm in as Zaz again, which has been picked up and they're talking about. So I've been very lucky when now that I look at it and then Sean had the movie called The Lackey, which had Vernon Wells in it. And Vernon Wells played uh, Bennett in Commando against Arnold. He was oh, the big yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great movie. And, and he was Wesley, the, the um, guy with the mohawk in Mad Max. So this guy's my idol. So now I'm in The Lackey. I walk on. I haven't slept for three days. I'm working at Guys and Dolls fighting all night. I turn yeah. up. I'm blood on me and they think I've put makeup on. Put on the <laughs> so, seriously, bro. And um, so I'm just there boxing. I have to do a boxing scene. I can box. And then they said, can you come back? So the, my role just builds and builds and builds till I become a producer. And uh, I met Vernon and then worked with him on a thing. So just basically it's because people work with you and they know they can rely on you. And right. also I had a really good look for that role as well. And just before that, I worked with Lou Ferrigno on End of the Fire with Ian Lauer, and I was again another cage fighter. So that yes, I, saw, I actually was, saw that. Yeah, it was good. Ian, Ian, Ian sent it to me, and uh, I, I watched it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was fun. And, and how did I get that role? Um, someone pulled out of the main role. I got offered the role. They needed someone to fill this role. He rang me while I was at the pool with my daughter training us swimming. So I'm there, yep, come on, get your arm over, breathe, exhale, expand the chest, kid. Yeah, what's up here? Yeah, I can do that, I can do that. And then you and you want to ask how much I got paid for that movie, um, Entered the Fire, with Lou Ferrigno and Iron and everything. I had to pay for my own hotel to go to San Francisco, and I got $125 a day. I know, I know <laughs> Louis didn't pay for his own hotel. What do you think Ferrigno got paid for that thing? The rumor were he was there for a day, and I think he got around ten G's. It was pretty low yeah. budget. He got a lot more than anyone else. And, and and the cool thing about that for me was I'm a huge, you know, Lou Ferrigno's Lou Ferrigno, sure. and I've always got along, got along with him very well and his sons. Yeah. Like in when I wrote for the magazines, I stood up for them. His sons so great, Lou Junior. I love him. Yeah. Yeah, Louis Junior. and Brent are great guys, and yes. Yeah, so th- I got to work with him and the cool thing was in the scene, we're just there and then uh, my scene interacts and he goes, don't make me angry. And I'm, th- I'm like a little kid going, oh shit, that's what he said in the whole Be cool, Grundy, be cool. <laughs> that's right, my five-year-old, Luke, Luke called me, my five-year-old is like, that's the Hulk! And, and unfortunately we had a bad connection and you know, Lou reads lips, so it, it, he was like, my son was going nuts because I kept saying, that's the real Hulk. And he was like, 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 like he had a million questions he, to ask Lou. And unfortunately, we never connected. But <laughs> five-year-old yeah, yeah. firing off questions about the Hulk and, and, and Professor Hulk. And, and all the, I don't even know if Louie could have answered the questions. But I know Lou would have loved it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you always like to be recognized for things that you've done in the past, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a huge role there. That was... So, so that Tom, was I mean, so the real, Tommy like, Flanagan from like, Sons of Anarchy is the star of that movie, uh, American Fighter. And so, I mean, that that's huge. I mean, 
Uh, this is like, you know, this could get you some definite notoriety. And you do play a... You do play a, a real badass in this movie. I mean, you're in the trailer. I mean, we could probably skip ahead to yeah, find it. yeah. If, thankfully, again, it's it's um. Thank you know what, um, Dave. Let's be honest. Um, all these roles that we're talking about, other than me having a mean, ugly looking head when my head shaved, it's because I have muscle. So when we really think about it, my plan was always I wanted to be a bodybuilder, and like you said it perfectly before on air. You, or no, you said it here. You can be an actor forever. Bodybuilding, it's a long term sport, like Dexter Jackson proved. If you look after your body, right? So you know, I went through living on the street for all that rough stuff. Then uh, the bodybuilding, then becoming an MMA fighter and doing all that training, and then you know becoming a soul collector, being a gangster for a while. So it was kind of like training. It's like I'll be honest. I watched the movie Rocky, and I took it real serious, mate. I went out there and began, okay, I'm gonna, what did he do? He was a collector. He wore a black leather jacket. I'm going to wear a black overcoat. I've got good hair, so I'm not going to wear a hat. It's, it's, it's crazy that I married a quiet Japanese woman like Adrian. Did you really? So oh, that's funny. funny. Yeah, mate. Anyway, I, I, love the, I love the movie. The trailer looks great. I can't wait to see it. What is the official release of it? The official release is the 21st of May. It's in select cinemas, and which is amazing because it's through Lionsgate, so that's that's a blessing. Yeah. And then it's um, available online, you know, uh, Netflix, Amazon, everything, on uh, May 25th. And, and the cool thing about that was just getting to work with so many actors, there like Sean is. Patrick Flannery from... So You, you look very one. big in the movie. Did you, uh, did you like, uh, juice up for that movie? I juice up for every movie, buddy. <laughs> I juiced up for this interview. <laughs> We're talking about orange juice, right? Yeah, uh, wink, wink. Well, to be honest with you, let me think. I didn't really... I, I've just recently um, got some great roles and big commercials and making good money and got some good clients, so I'm making money. But, buddy, up, up until, like, uh, honestly, you, you Google my name as an actor, I'm worth $11 million. Are so, you? Re wow, I'm that's worth, great. Can I get a loan? That's what I, so you look at my resume, Days of Our Lives, Shutter Island, this, that, 30 things, 15 commercials. Right, right, right. But it's just now that I'm financially able to, when someone offers me a role and it's not full, I, I knock back a lot of work now because I make more doing what I'm doing. Right. And you get to a point that you don't want to do these stupid roles anymore. And then also the low budget sometimes it's it's unprofessional and i've directed and produced now so i've kind of got these expectations right. of it well you don't want a real so director like, to say this guy's like does loser stuff you know what i mean that now that you're doing you can select you know more appropriate stuff for to get better and better roles otherwise you know you, you usually you well on the way up people are fine but if you go de back down and go take those terrible roles no one wants you for the higher roles again right yeah it's 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 a great point you see some actors and they're always working but they're always at this C level or B level, and I'm there myself, so I don't, I'm not putting anyone down. But you just get a, you just, it's like you're a little kid. You want to take everything when you're eating, right. and now you're like, you're like a fighter who's like, you know what? Wait, wait, and you just take what's yours. But the, the main thing I did that really changed my career, Dave, was I started producing my own movies. I started just learning and watching until this movie Maverick and Grundy that um, I produced it with Maverick. The whole thing financed it. Um, I've now, had, now Maverick is 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 one of the guys who helped Rich Piana start Five Percent Nutrition. In case a lot of people didn't know, there, correct? Exactly. Yeah, you're always in the know with your knowledge, mate. Yeah, Maverick von Hogg. That's my 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 best friend, my boss. Yeah, the leader of the Soul Collectors, and yeah, he was. Um, you should get him on. He was the I'm guy. He was literally the brains behind Rich Piana and how Five Percent. He was the guy. When if you noticed, everyone start. He started to get ink. Maverick's got, you know, the Soul Collector logo on his eye. It says Outlaw. Yeah, explain he's, what he's, the Soul a, Collector is for people who might not understand. Oh, in 1956 in the Philippines, uh, his father, who was a Navy Special Forces person, set up a collection company, which means if someone owes you money yeah. and you can't get it, we'll go get it. We're going to take 50%. We're going to give you 50%. You no longer have anything to do with it. And it's different levels of personal debt, different debt to different criteria. So that's where it started. And that's part of the movie Maverick and Grundy. So I was a soul collector. Um, 
you know, and like I said, my life's an open book. I was I was followed by SWAT and I was raided by SWAT. I was looking at 50, uh, 26 years to life. I was transported all the way to Ontario. Oh, really? Um, wow. So that's, that's a, yeah. So I, I, I went through a lot of stuff um, and enjoyed myself, but I got crazy. And then I just started to get back into acting again. And Let me ask you a question. I, I, this, is, this is a serious question because um, I always wanted this. In the real world, when you go to collect money from someone, let's say someone owes me 20 grand, all right, whatever. I gave them a loan, whatever, and they didn't pay me. I need the money. I contact you guys. I hire you guys. What, as a guy who's go, the guy who goes to knock on the door or whatever, you, what's the technique you use to get the money? Be honest. Like what, what would be your tech? I know everyone probably has their own style, but what would be your style to get money from someone, you know, what? Mm -hmm. So this okay, perfect. That's a great question. It's not violent. It's 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 intimidation and it's wording. You never say anything wrong. So let's come up and um. G'day, Dave. How are you? My name's Grundy. Uh, we need to have a talk. You know that fifty thousand dollars you owed Mark. Do you really think Mark had fifty thousand dollars to give you, Dave? Are you that stupid, mate? No. He came to me. What you have and what you now owe is me $50,000, so Mark, we're not even gonna worry about him, we're gonna worry about you and I. Uh. Now, I'm like Bank of America, I'm going to collect my money, however, my methods are different. <laughs> and then it's a lot of pausing, and watching, and you, you have to get, I won't spoil it, but you've gotta get Maverick on. I went in on a collection, and Literally, it was the most masterful piece of collecting I've ever seen. Where I was, I was, I was a strong arm. Yeah. The, just the, give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Not the money. Oh, I didn't get it all. Come back. Where's the rest of me? God damn it! <laughs> but Maverick, he came on a collection with me. I was working at a bodybuilding thing. He came with me, and he said, "Can I handle it?" I said, "Good." He goes, "Okay, you shut up and just do what I say." And I'm like, "Okay." So we walk into the guy's office. I've been getting $400 off a $40,000 debt that he was happy to pay. Yeah. And we walked into his office and we won't get, I couldn't get a cent out of him more. We walked in there that day. We walked out there with $36,000. Wow. We did it what did Maverick say to him? Bro, he, we walked in there and he just said, and I had a good relationship with this guy because he was paying me. So I was happy. Right, right, right. You know what? So I was happy. So Maverick played on that and he just, it was amazing to watch him just, okay, good. And then he walks in and then this guy was a certain Asian, from a certain Asian country. Then he's seen his a wedding picture, which was just recent. And he knew that the two races of Asians didn't get along. Oh, really? So he's sitting, I never forget, I'm standing by the door. It's like a movie. Yeah. And I'm standing by the door and he walks in and he says, Grundy and I just look through him like, I'm not talking to you, bro. And he's like, what's wrong? And he sees Maverick with the ink on his face. Yeah, yeah. And he says, Please sit down. He's sitting in the guy's seat. He's letting the guy sit down at his desk on the other side while Maverick's like, Wait, that's it right, right there. That's Please. an intimidation factor. You can yeah, sit yeah. down at my desk. And it just was amazing going. And he did the whole spiel of, you, see, you think you owe them. It then took the spiel another level. You think Grundy's money? That moron, that Australian <laughs> way who somehow got some kind of man crush on you because he's letting you get away with butt rape on him? <laughs> That's another matter. But right now, and we walked out of there with money, and the funniest thing was, buddy, he had, this is not to be rude to anyone, this is business, and this yeah. happened over seven years ago, but it's all a story. He walked out and took pictures of all the cars in the car park, Maverick. Then he sent it to his contact and said, who's the owner? This guy had a lot of illegal people working for him who couldn't get cars oh. themselves legally, so they were in his name. So Maverick's just like, they're my cars, where's my money? And then the, the Mexican guys all came out, five of them. <laughs> He's sitting there going, and Mexicans, I love them, and they're tough, and yeah. they like their cars. But Maverick just looked at him and said, I understand your situation, but it's not my problem. You don't want to make me a problem, leave it be. We walked out of there with thirty six thousand dollars. Like, I shot the sheriff. <laughs> which of which you guys make half of fifty percent of, right? On a collection. Sorry again. 
You said you guys were making 50% on the collections, right? Ah, uh, 50%. And I was, I only charged 20%. I learned so much. From oh, that, that was yeah, before so you, many... you were working for them. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but... and then, then I learned, then I seen the light. And you and know what I the truth is? If you can't spot. get money from someone, 50% is a good deal. I don't care if you take 50% because at least I'm getting 50% of something, you know? Exactly. And, and, and it's like acting. Wealthy people are always giving money. They're always needing their money back. So you do a good job for one person, then right. it steamrolls, but steamrolls. Right. It's like then, uh, Ray Donovan type of thing situation, you know? Yeah, it just expands. You get note of things, and, and it's, it's fun. And, mm-hmm. and then, of course, it gets wild, and that's when you get arrested by Yeah, of course, and, that's when you go to jail. Yeah, exactly, when he gets out of control. Because there's always some person who's like, fuck you, I'm not giving it to you. And again, they call the cops or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, you know? Mate, with Maverick, I never had one. I'll never forget this one time. It's a short little, I called him the short little angry man. We actually went to his house because we couldn't, he wouldn't cut, we couldn't see him in his business. So he comes out and he's just yelling at me and Maverick. And I'm just, because I'm very respectful to Maverick because he's my boss. So I just want to slap the shit out of this guy. I just want to slap him back and forth a few times. And I'm looking at Mav and Mav's like, okay. And then Mav does this thing of just this gentle thing of where he just puts his hand gently on it and goes, well, listen, I'm going to leave. <laughs> and um, I'm going to hope that you'll call me to tell me you've got my money because our next meeting won't be the same as this meeting. We walk away and Maverick, we get in the car and Maverick says to me, three minutes. So I don't really know what he means because yeah. I'm still like, a, I'm like the dog on a leash. <laughs> 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 I'm just like an angry little pit bull. Yeah. And then two minutes, the guy calls and says, I'll have your money tomorrow. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. He, he knows human just, nature, did, in other words, so well. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievably Unbelievable, so, mate. Yeah. Unbelievably so. So the movie American Fighter will be out May 21st. And then, of course, Maverick and uh, Grundy is going to be... When is that released? Or is that already out? No, oh, we're going to get the trailer to you. Where okay. the, we've got three more days of shooting to, to finish it all up. Because, like we said, Maverick lost his eye, his memory. We had to reshoot over with a big break. So now he's even scarier yeah. looking with only one eye. Yeah, well, he he just he buddy he's so gangster that and such a man that so the people have to understand it. He 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 won he's in NPC history. He won three different divisions or something. The first person to do it. He's getting ready to defend his title. A fifty-two-year-old man wow. competing against the young bucks. Then had a head-on collision with a um, a semi-trailer. Lost his eye. Lost his memory for six months, had 22 facial reconstructions, wow. had more. Lost his memory, got so skinny and fat. And I was there when he w- was just sitting there with Gwen. I was there after that when she rang me. And he's just sat there and goes, from this frail little man who didn't know who he was to going, babe, did you pay the bill? And she says, what bill? He says, the bill. And he just came back. Oh, and just, his memory and- just returned out of nowhere. It's, it's a miracle. Like the, the doctors, it's a miracle. There's footage of his eye hanging out and wow. everything. And then, and w- when people say, what's a man fighting, being tough, being compassionate, being a good leader, but these little things, which I'm not as manly as him, where he looked like shit. He was fat and skinny <laughs> with no fucking eye. Didn't put an eye thing over it so the eye was there. Just walked around skinny with a tank top on and I just looked at him. Well, he couldn't remember who he was. He, didn't, he had no, nothing to, 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 to worry about, you know. Yeah, but then when he came back, he didn't. He, he just walked around like he did. He was just normal. He had, I remember he, his, Gwen rang me and she goes, he woke up. I said, put him on the phone because I know what he's like. I said, Mav everything's okay don't rip anything out of your face and he goes what the f do you mean things are okay have you seen me (laughs) and he's um he's back and and we included it in the movie where he gets shot in the eye we show the footage of the eye not being in there so i'm waiting for someone to say they go oh those special effects are no good dude that was yeah well that's that's the real thing yeah exactly well we'll, you know we'll get maverick on the show next time with you when you guys are ready to release that because you know what you you worked up you told us so many great stories about it now i actually want to see the, the movie because you got me all excited about you know this story which sounds you know pretty damn good you know yeah, and it's it's basically a comedy yeah. of being a gangster, and an example of that is like um, I'm very big. Like I, I come across a bit of a, a, a bit of a wild guy and everything, but I'm very much into laws of war, strategy, and everything. And so the movie, so the first scene is that where we've got 
a guy playing a guitar and, a, and the leather man from the village people and a hot girl in a red dress walking up <laughs> to distract the guys. And then we walk up behind and I'm smoking a joint, look at Mav and throw them. And, and that lands, they turn around and we shoot them. So basically, you know, I'm util utilizing the law of, you know, positioning your enemy on hostile ground, distraction. So it, it's, it's real, but it's put into a comedy thing. And the other thing we do is we explain a lot of the things because I would be with people and people would say the dirty gun. The dirty gun, you know, you got to get rid of the dirty gun. And yeah. the dirty gun to people out there that may not know is that when many people don't, they just pretend they do. A dirty gun means you've used a gun in a crime, you've you've put a you've, you've put a bullet out of it and the bullet's lodged somewhere. That gut that bullet can now be identified as the gun. That's a dirty gun. You now need to throw the gun away. Right. So I would be hanging out with people and I'm seriously, this is me, bro. Smoking me joint, drinking me beer going. Why do they keep throwing these friggin' guns out when they're dirty? Why don't they just clean them? <laughs> and then I'm watching a movie. <laughs> That's good that you didn't really play. know what a dirty gun was. I didn't that, that, know. That, well, that, I'm hanging comforting. out with these gangsters and I'm like, and let's just say, if you do need to do that, my first gun was like a Glock or beautiful and that, and then like you got to throw it away. I'm like, from go, go from the expensive one to the guy go. Yeah, what have you got for 10 bucks, bro? <laughs> like, yeah, I'll just right. throw the bullet at him. <laughs> I'm making 7000 for the job. The gun, $700? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't, you can't you afford to get a nice government. gun if you're going to throw it away. Exactly. Well, and Guy, uh, thanks important. so much um, for joining us. I know you're going to stay on, and we're going to join us. Uh, you're going to join Lee Priest and I for Iron Rage. So that'll be fun. Guys, check out American Fighter. Debuting May 21st, 2021 in theaters, limited theaters. And then, of course, it'll probably be on the internet. Um, so you can download it from there. Uh, always a pleasure to have you. And we'll have you back with Maverick for the uh, Maverick and Grundy uh, release as well. For now, we're out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo with another edition of Live With. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Dave.